Ariel, listen to me. The human world, it's a mess. Life under the sea is better than anything they got up there. The Coral Reef. Tiny individual polyps living together in a compact colony. Some are big, some are small, and come in a variety of different colors. These organisms are the root of beauty and what make up the most diverse ecosystems on the planet. They create homes for fish species, octopus, and many other creatures that call this place home. But something's happened. Macroalgae are beginning to cover the reefs. There is an increased number of bleaching events and more disease being passed between corals. Depressing, isn't it? Now what could possibly cause all this destruction? Well, there are a few things. The industrialization of the human race is changing our Earth. And with this change, the air and sea temperatures are increasing. The sea is becoming more acidic. The frequency and intensity of hurricanes are increasing. Plus, overfishing and pollution is just adding to the stress of these corals. Just so we can fully understand the upcoming facts and evidence, let's quickly review Earth's heat budget and carbon cycle. Now this is a graph that came from our exam that shows our budget of heat. 30% of the solar radiation is reflected and 70% of it's absorbed by plants and land and what have you. But when that heat hits the ocean, 85 to 95% of that is absorbed. Plus, water has a high heat capacity, which is going to keep the water a lot warmer for a lot longer than the air will be. So let's pretend this apple is the ocean. Incoming sunlight comes in, 10% is back off in the atmosphere. But now since we're talking about the ocean, 90% is absorbed, so it comes in, soaks up in the ocean, and there you have it. Heat in the ocean. <laughs> so you ask, why is it getting hotter? Well, this is our time as humans to shine. Because greenhouse gases like water, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide that we put off into the atmosphere creates a barrier for 70% of the heat re-emitting out into space to get trapped. Increasing the temperature. Kinda like leaving your car in the sun all day. Wouldn't want to be that guy. But moving on, let's go over the carbon cycle. Carbon's in everything, from the atmosphere to the apple I hate with the Sharpie marker on it. It gets transferred from the land to the air to the sea, back to the land, up back into the air, and this does this all day long every day. Now you remember this guy over here from the last graph? Each year we spit out about 7 gigatons of CO2. 25% from human activity is absorbed into the ocean. Ultimately, this drops the pH from 8.15 to 8.05. That's 30% increase of hydrogen ions in the top 100 meters of the ocean. Well, because the pH goes down, carbon ions become more scarce, leaving the corals in a pickle because corals secrete calcium carbonate for their skeletons. Ooh. As water temperatures rise, corals become increasingly stressed. When stress levels get too high, they start expelling their symbiotic algae, or zooxanthellae is what they're called, which live inside a very thin layer of their tissues. The zooxanthellae are uber important because they can turn sunlight into food uh, for their coral hosts. So they also facilitate the formation of the coral skeleton itself, which is the main component of the coral reef. So because the zoos and belly give coral, coral their, their various rich colors, um, without the zoos and belly they become bleached. Um, so corals can't live without zoos and belly. And for coral reefs that are already stressed due to poor water quality and destructive fishing, frequent interactions with you know irresponsible divers and snorkelers. Increased water temperatures could become a proverbial straw that breaks the camel's back, ultimately. Bummer. So we can pretend that the zooxanthellae are pretty much like our chubby marker. My hand being the coral, when it's stressed, this happens. 
now my hand is bleached. Reiterating from before, um, the shifts to an acidic ocean changes the chemistry, making it more difficult for many critters to build up the hard parts, um, the calcium carbonate. The decline in the pH threatens a variety of organisms, including corals, because they provide one of the richest habitats on Earth. Now, the ocean's pH is found to be 0.1 lower than pre-industrial times. It's projected to be a total of 0.3 by 2100. Ken Caldera from Carnegie Institute in Washington suggests that the pH in several centuries will be lower than any time in the past 300 million years. That's a long time. And adding insult to injury, coccolithophores, foraminifera, pteropods, and any other kind of plankton that's covered in small little calcium plates um, you find it hard to grow as well. The coral and the coralline algae, uh, they secrete the calcium carbonate. By adding heat in an acidic ocean, um, with the bleaching corals, that exposed skeleton is ultimately going to be disintegrated. Warming of the climate system is unequivocal, as is how evident from observations of increased global average air and ocean temperatures, widespread melting of snow and ice, and the raising global average sea levels really are. Changes in precipitation and evaporation over the ocean suggest a freshening of mid and high latitude waters together with increased salinity in low latitude waters. Along the lines of um, warming water, there's definitely a high likelihood of increased intensity of tropical storms, so buckle your seatbelts, coral, you're in for a bumpy ride. Oh, it's a video. I still enjoy it. So what do we do now? Well, we can reconstruct the damaged reef. One company I found to be amazing is Eco Reefs. Eco Reefs Incorporated began in Wyoming in 2001. Dr. Michael D. Moore, president and CEO of the company, explains that they utilize a patented ceramic artificial reef system natural materials mimicking the form of wild reefs. It kind of looks like most branching corals, like staghorn to be more precise, but they look pretty legit. So the eco reefs um, have a canopy habitat to protect small grazing fish underneath of it. And also, it gives a substrate for coral recruits. A planktonic coral larva can't really settle on algae covered surfaces, so having a fresh new slate of ceramics is perfect. The modules are also made of non-toxic, pH-neutral, chemically inert ceramic, which it doesn't inhibit the settlement of corals and any other invertebrates. So that's pretty awesome. The second thing we can do to help the environment and or the coral reefs is reduce the local stressors, like pesticide runoff, regulate fishing, put up mooring buoys for the tourists, and cut down on noise pollution. Last, but certainly not least, reduce your own carbon footprint. Here are some ways to do so. Turn down the temperature in your shower and while you're doing laundry. Saves you money and brightens your brights. You can wash your dishes by hand. You won't waste as much water and it's faster to do anyway. Unless you can bike or walk to wherever you need to go, carpooling is always a better choice. If you need a new car, get a hybrid. BYOB. Plastic bags pile up so recycle the old ones and get the reusable ones. Sometimes grocery stores give you a discount. And lastly, wean off of water bottles. They are an uber waste of product. Plus, they're way cheaper to filter and fill a canteen. Like these cigs. They come in a multitude of colors, just like the coral. Our fate might be worse than we expect. It's crucial for us to take action in trying to preserve the most spectacular diverse habitats from poor water quality with high levels of sediment, nutrients, toxins, pathogens, as well as fishing pressures before it's too late. Unless their thermal thresholds change, coral reefs will experience an increasing frequency and severity of mass bleaching events 
disease, and mortality as CO2 and temperatures increase. I hope you found this video not only entertaining but educational. Thanks for watching, and remember, reduce, reuse, and recycle. I'm sure this guy will thank you for it later.